welcome, welcome, welcome for another episode of They Gonna Feel Me podcast. This is episode 30, and I'm your host for today, Rob. And along with me, we got my boy Reese, my boy Chris, and Al C. Before we get started, though, before we get started, you know what it is. You know what it is. You got to like, subscribe, share, comment, do whatever you got to do so we can get them subscriptions up, get them likes up, and click on the bell so you can get notified when more content is going to be added to the channel. But enough of that let's get to these topics all right first of all we got christian obacelli and the case of courtney clinton if you haven't heard about this strange twisting story uh social media a couple he was found he was found dead uh She's suspected to have been the one to have to have uh, to have murdered him. Uh, nah, she what, did. Do, what do you guys what do you guys think about this this weird topic? So with this particular topic, so she she apparently uh, I think she's claiming that either there's like emotional stress or self defense. Uh, I think that uh, according to police reports there was like a bunch of disturbances and uh police were called and you know of course they found the body and uh everything like that i know that there's been claims that you know she's claiming emotional stress and everything but apparently she's been caught out like celebrating it wasn't maybe not celebrating but like you know just doing casual stuff like going to the bar you know uh even though like a couple of days previous she murdered someone um also also there's uh I, I don't know when but they say that there's video or something out there where she was like kissing her dogs and you know blood was still on her you know no matter what is being said the reality of the matter is that this situation is being treated in a way that it would not be treated you know if not for the fact that you know i mean I, i'm not going to say it's because she's white but she's definitely being treated differently you know like uh then you would expect a murder uh to happen the only and that's enough to be upset about but as anybody can uh, assume the issue that lies is is that right now his brother is trying to get all this advocacy particularly from black people to like basically support and like start this this dialogue to hopefully get her brought to justice but what's stopping the black community is the fact that a bunch of a bunch of old tweets and messages and things he said online has resurfaced and he's saying the most ugliest things he possibly can about black women specifically you know talking about their attitudes their behaviors them being less than uh than attractive than white women and his preference for white women and um you know i'm trying to be as uh, uh kind as i possibly can and not you know uh say anything ugly about the dead you know and i'm not going to say that he deserved what he got um but i will say that i feel as if this particular death and to a degree goes as i don't know it's it's kind of like I, I noticed this trend where people black people specifically black men specifically they get to like this level of success in their careers and in their lives and then all of a sudden they you know all of a sudden grow this affinity for like other races you know and it's fine if your preferences are your preferences or you bump into the person that you bump into and they're who are meant for you it's just when you start getting involved with whoever and then all of a sudden you feel the need to drag black women you know and and his particular ugly tweets they just it comes off as bitter irony like uh the f idea that he's just make uh, like idolizing you know these white women and having a relationship with one only to potentially be laid out by one and i don't know that 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 level of of irony is just so loud and it kind of for me overshadows any conversation that's had about 
oh, we need to have all this advocacy. It's kind of like one of those things where I just want the law to handle whatever the law does, you know, like uh, on its own. I don't want her to see uh, escape justice, but at the same time, I'm not about to put his name on a t-shirt. I know that much, you know, like that. that's just my personal feeling. Uh, and my whole, my whole yeah. thing on it, bro, is just like, I remember seeing it, it was literally last week when I saw it, this past weekend, we were out of town in Texas, and I saw about him getting murdered first, and then a couple days later, you see everything about his tweets, and I was really, like, normally I don't, I don't pay attention to stuff like that, but then I look at it, and I'm just seeing him just dogging black women, and it's just like, bro, it's unwanted. Like it was, it was unnecessary. Like why? Would, okay, if you have your preference, and I've said this before, love is love. You know what I mean? You love whoever you love. There's to me, there's no rule in the rule book that says, oh, I have to date black women. Oh, I have to date white women or anything like that. You love who you love. You love comes in all shapes, forms, sizes, colors, all of that. But. The whole dog in your own race is like, dog, you don't get the fact that your mom black, your grandma black, you know, because because my nigga, you you ain't got no white in you. There was no way you had any white in you from the pictures that we saw. You feel me? So it's like your mom black. If you got sisters, your sister's black, your aunt's black. You know what I'm saying? It's like your grandma black, your great grandma. It's like, come on, bro. Like, how? Why is that necessary? Look at, listen to you. Look at your name. You clearly come from African descent. It's like this. Is that necessary? And then, like you say, it's so ironic that you put, you know, this group of women on a pedestal, and that same exact group of women you put on the pedestal is who took you out. You feel me? It's just like, man, I just, I just feel bad, bro, for. It's like it just sucks being black in America. No matter no matter what, we can't get respect from either side. We can't get respect from nobody. You get disrespected by our own race, then you turn around and you get disrespected by other races as well. You feel me? It's like you know, it's a lose lose game, regardless. You, you but um, I mean, you know, you, you said in in America, but honestly, man, being black anywhere. I mean, true uh, because no matter no matter where you go, if you you being real, the plight of the African I mean being black in general, you you name the country like we just we just seen for a couple weeks ago, you know, in Ukraine, you know, even even though you're getting invaded by invaded by Russia, you still have time, you know, to, to be, be racist, racist, you know, against. African, I mean, African American or people of African descent, and not letting them get on various transportations uh, or means of transportation to get to get out. But going back to this, going back to this topic, you know, I don't, I don't want to lose sight of the fact, though, at the end of the day, a life was lost, and above, you know, above anything, no matter what he has done, or matter what ignorance he is. Um, he is perpetuated or whatever. Nobody deserves, you know. Nobody deserves yeah. what In happened. In no way, shape, form, or fashion, am I saying nor me or Alex? No, I'm, 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 I'm just saying that. nobody deserves. Nobody deserves that, you know, to be uh, to be taken out or to be murdered like that. So I fall, you know, I fall on the side of I want I want justice to be served. Like if it were if if the roles were reversed and it was him. That you know they killed her. He he would probably be in jail right now. Right now, jail that exact same. You know, it wouldn't be no. There wouldn't there wouldn't be a a, a grace period or I was uh, mentally mentally unstable or I have mental uh, mental health issues or anything like that. Can you take me to you know a twenty four hour place to go get a psycho psychiatric evaluation or say she abused? You know, say she abused me or anything like that. They would be looking at you like, man, come on, she abusing you, please, come on. You know, so I, I really hope the truth comes out about the whole situation, and it really, uh, justice is really, justice is really served. And I think at the end of the day, I think we always, I mean, on this show, we always, uh, at the end of the day, advocate for black women. You know, it, no matter what the no matter what the situation, no matter what the situation is, uh, <clears throat> no matter how you feel, uh, it doesn't give you it doesn't give you uh, grounds to down 
a whole, you know, a whole demographic uh, of women. I, at, it's, the end, it, at the end of the day, it, you know, again, and to you all point, yeah, I don't, I don't want to condone this, and I don't want her to get punished, you know, because I don't even want the precedence to be set that like, oh, if I like cry a little bit, then it's cool if you kill a black guy. I don't want that that narrative to be out there. But I will say that my tolerance level is just so low for like black folk that down other black folk. Like, you know, like, a, I mean, it's one thing, a joke or, a, you know, little back and forth between us, like, a, like, like casually. But when you say things that are just so hurtful about your own people and then you do this old hypocritical ass thing or this hypocritical ass thing happens where we supposed to like be on your side after you completely abandon us or like this does like i'm 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 in the mindset of choosing violence almost every time and being i want to say f you so bad you know what i'm saying the only reason why i don't drag this guy is because he's dead you know but like it's like why do we always i'm, I'm it's it's kind of like why do we always have to basically be the bigger people when other people aren't willing to be, you know, kind to us or, you know, or, or, or what have you? The only thing I can say in this given situation for a brother like that is there's such an undercurrent of black people out there who I just feel as if they're broken people in general, like they've been traumatized or or they have some kind of mental complex, some some sort of, of, of thing they need therapy for, where they need to like learn self-love, self-love for themselves, their race, their, their heritage, their background, their family, something. Because like the idea of you having this mantra, this mindset of they're better and uh, the only way I'm gonna be satisfied is I'm with them, is if like to exclude yourself from the black race is so, is so, uh, I, I can't, I can't see how you think that way, you know? So before I drag you, the only thing I can hope for is you to get some sort of levity, some sort of therapy, some sort of advocacy, some sort of something to like help change your mindset. You bitch nigga. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's all I got to say about it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it, it's, it's just, it, to me, and like I said, I look at it. I look at it differently. It just to me, it's about being being human, and just having uh, having compassion or empathy for somebody, no matter the situation. Like I mean, take for instance, Herman Cain. You know, he ran around with the foolishness, following Trump for all those years, and went to that. I mean, went to the uh, went to the the rally in Oklahoma, mess around and got COVID and died. I mean, I didn't agree. I didn't agree with the things that he was saying. I didn't agree with the people that he associated with. But at the end of the day, hey, this dude got a family. This dude died. You know what I'm saying? Over foolishness, unnecessary foolishness. Now, am I going? Am I going? Go making fun of him? No. I mean, am I? I but I do feel. I, I feel empathy for his family. Like, dang man, this dude. Really, I mean, went out there and he died. He died a, a, a irresponsible, a, a death that could have been, that didn't have to. For what? I mean, and you know, it's like it's almost like a speed bump because they, them folks kept on with the, they kept on with the RNC uh convention. Like they ain't even mentioned it. They ain't even mentioned this dude. He did all this, you know what I'm saying, to break his neck to, uh, to you know uphold their values and like nothing, they said nothing. And, and they didn't. They couldn't even get an in, uh, in more uh, <laughs> in memory of Herman Cain. Playing that, so, playing that, Sarah, that Sarah McLaughlin music in the background, like <laughs> nothing, got nothing. But I mean, enough of this story. Hopefully, hopefully she'll come and come to justice. Moving on. All right, Netflix has a show. It is the number one rated show on Netflix. And I'm not getting them no self promotion, but hey, the show is it's entertaining. It's called it's called the ultimatum. The premise of the ultimatum is two, a co I mean couples, they come to the program. They they've been dating for you know a, a given amount of time, and they propose to their mate. Hey, after this period of time, you can either 
marry me or leave uh, uh or not or not marry me or leave by your leave by yourself so i know we were talking we were talking before Reeves. what did what did what did you think about what did you think about the show uh i mean i thought it was cool for what it was i mean i always think the idea of an ultimatum to me is kind of weird and just unnecessary i feel like if you got to give somebody an ultimatum then that to me means that you probably don't need need to be with that person or that person doesn't really consider you uh their partner in that way you know especially as men like if to me personally i feel like if a man really wants you and he value values you as a as a wife he's gonna lock you down as soon as possible because he doesn't want nobody else to get you you know what i'm saying like me personally i i proposed my wife in six months like after after we got together so you know I just feel like if if a man really wants you and he knows that he wants you, he doesn't need an ultimatum. He doesn't need to be pushed. And if he's coming up with a bunch of excuses to as to why he can't he can't get married, then it's obviously because it's it's underlying issues in y'all's relationship that's causing him to not want to be married at that time. I mean, or I mean, he could he could not be ready, but uh most men they know when they're when when they met they have the one and they want to get get married so but anyway i mean the show was was really entertaining uh you know the couples are very interesting my only thing about the show is i felt like it wasn't diverse as far as like the looks like aesthetically you know i felt like everybody was just beautiful like beautiful people like you know what i'm saying it wasn't no big people on there wasn't no you know, you know, it wasn't diversity as far as like aesthetics to me personally. I, I would have, I thought it would have been more realistic if the people weren't all like models, like look like mo- they could be models. You know, for ma- majority of them, like they could be models anyway. It was some regular people on there, but like, uh, I guess just size wise, you know, like everybody was very fit and you know looked very good, and so that was one thing that stuck out to me. But. Uh, I mean the show was was pretty was pretty interesting it was it kind of opened it opens your opens your eyes a little bit it forces you to kind of think about your own relationship and like things that you can do better in your relationship you know while i was watching that i was like well man you know maybe i could be you know more introspective more this more that more you know it, it kind of makes you think you know as you're watching the show uh but for what it was it was like i said without taking too much time it was pretty good I recommend everybody watch it. You know, me and my wife watched it together and uh you know, we watched it in like two days. So that's I mean the yeah. show was pretty entertaining. Yeah. Now me and me and my wife watched it also, but you know, I I ex I asked everybody else like it was a it was a, a interesting caveat to you know to it though, because all the couples that were there, they threw they threw a curveball because you had the op uh, you had the chance to meet other to meet other people to meet the other couples you can you know you can talk to them you went on dates or whatever but at at a at a at the end of that uh that little feeling out period you had to pick someone who you felt most attracted to and you all were married you were quote unquote it was a trial marriage you were married to each other for three uh, for three weeks, yeah. and then after those three weeks were up, you had the opportunity <laughs> to go back to the person, your person that you brought on, you brought on the show. So then they gave they gave you an opportunity, you know, to see, hey, do I still, you know, do I still want to be with my person, or did I have enough time with this person to open my eyes up to? leaving with this person or this person showed certain things or certain qualities that i'm missing in my current in my current relationship so so do y'all think how do y'all think y'all would have built or y'all you know if y'all had had that if y'all had had that hey i told i told my i told my wife i said i probably been one of them dudes that dropped the one knee at the at the beginning of the show because because I was looking at some of them dudes, I was like, "Ain't no way you finna be with one of them for three weeks, dog." <laughs> I'm like, nah. That's what I'm saying. So you tell nah, me I gotta go on funny. the show. You tell me I gotta go on the show. Let another nigga marry my wife, and it, like, like, 
these folks give me the down on the show too. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm just saying you married, so all things go in the marriage, right? Because yeah. if you go in there, you give me the down. But some, of, but some of them, it did. Well, I don't know if it went that far. But, 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 but Chris, think about it though. Think about it. I mean, you bring up, you bring up, you we saying it in a, in a humorous way, but you bring up an interesting point though. Like if you if you go there, if you go on the show, and now we just not talking about we just talking about hypothetically, you know, if you go on the show before you and and said uh, your your person, you know, you're someone special. Y'all go on the show. I don't know if y'all would talk about it beforehand. Be like, hey, lay out some boundaries. Hey, this is what this is what we gonna do. I'm, I, I mean, we can agree that hey, we gonna take it only this only this far. Or if you y'all talk about it and be like, hey, I just want you to experience everything. If if you feel like blah blah blah, you know, do blah blah blah. Mm. But if you go there, you go there. I'm just saying, and within them three weeks. Buddy, I mean, she let Buddy, you know, do do blah blah. I mean, you gotta ask your, you gotta ask yourself, like. But but we but for letting her go on the show and get beat it down by somebody else that drink. No, like, you know what I'm saying? How how strong how strong is your relationship? You know what I'm saying? If it would take her three weeks to just you know, but be like, when, that's true. but that it it took. It tests the, the strength of your relationship, but at the same time, I mean, what's the difference between getting meted out in three weeks and then, like, when your significant other goes on a bachelorette party or bachelor party and they have one last night with somebody, you know, they may still come back to you, but, like, they just want to get one last whatever out their system before uh, beforehand. I mean, the only thing that becomes a problem with this show is just the idea of, there's millions of people across the world watching, you know, like, I mean, for bachelorette parties up for a lot of people that's going to get married because now people are going to be no, I'm telling you. Is, nah. is she one last night? Wait a minute. <laughs> Listen, I've been on uh, to quite a few uh, un unofficially. I've been to quite a few bachelor <laughs> parties. Unofficially. Unofficially. Okay, I've been a few. Uh, and I, I've been a few this my last night freeze. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, there's quite a few people that treat those types of things like it's their last night. So when in Rome, get meted down. So like I mean, I'm just saying, you know, like <laughs> it's uh but I will say <laughs> I will say this though. The 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 issue that I think comes up with a show like this is I don't I don't like the idea of ultimatums you know like a, as far as like it re goes to relationships it's kind of like it's two ways it's like as men I feel as if like you shouldn't play no games to nobody I think I've said this on a post uh, actually funny enough on Instagram there was like this post where this woman describes how she gave an ultimatum to her dude that marry me or I'm moving to Vegas and then like buddy says do what you got to do and she played cat and mouse with this dude for like weeks all the way up until she left and you really gonna let me leave and he was like have a safe trip and i feel like with a with something like this it's kind of like one of those things of on one level and it may not have to do with the show but on one level it's kind of like as dude don't play games with somebody's heart don't get into a serious relationship with somebody who you just sometime you about and they looking for like everything but and this is something i remember when i was single there are a lot of women out there that are acting like they are rushing to like uh like like a, a the finish line when it comes to relationships and like they getting in relationships with people saying oh this might be the one as opposed to this is my one you know it's like you just trying to rush to getting married and it, it's 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 as a guy like i can understand men feeling some kind of way about that because like i'm just an object at that point you know, like I'm just a means to an end so that it can justify you. It's like I was good enough to be married, not because like I want to spend the rest of my life with this person. I want to have their kids. I want to have that. I want I want to have a union with this particular person. And like I'm, you're going to give me an ultimatum just to like boost up your like do something for you like that it's is standard. completely for you. Yeah, it's like it's so selfish, like uh, in that way. I see a lot right. of people that do that just to keep kind of keep up with their <coughs> their friends. You know what I'm right. saying? They see one of their friends, their best friend may have got married, so now they're like, you know what? 
I got to do what this person did. And then they put, you know, different guys through the ringer. I mean, it's there are some people, there are some dudes, and I mean, it's females like this as well. There are some people that just don't want to put that type of tag on their relationship at that current moment. It don't mean that it'll never come. But I mean, my whole thing with the old, even though, yes, I'm married, I still I still see so many people. I see the status all the time on social media. Oh, this person really loves you. They're going to marry you within this certain amount of time. They're going to do this within a certain amount of time. Everybody is not the same. Yeah, it's everybody not, the same. Stop, stop yeah, looking really. at it that way. If this dude is providing for you, if this dude is doing what he's supposed to do as a man, just because you don't have a ring don't mean nothing. Like, I mean, if he's not if he's not putting off that type of energy and you feel like you can trust him, because I know a lot of niggas that got rings on and they be out here meeting motherfuckers down. You feel me? And, they and women. No three weeks. And women. I've seen some scandalous ass women out there too who will go unnamed as I look into the camera, looking directly into your soul. Because I know who you are. I hope you watch it, big dog. I hope you watch it. Or big dog mm. it. <laughs> big dog it. Nah, but that uh that that ring, I mean that which I was just talking about came up a lot on this show. You know, it's a lot of it was women that brought their men onto the show. And then the role is kind of reversed. The man, like this, the whole Zay dude, which he, I don't think he was ready for marriage either. But you know, it, he got brought on the show, and it turns out that his his woman ended up being the one that wasn't really ready to get married. You know, so it's like I feel like, especially with women, they have like a timeline. You know, by a certain age, they want to be married, they want to have kids. And that's why they, at a certain age, they they start to get, they start to kind of panic a little bit or, you know, oh, I, I have to get married. I have to have this ring on my finger because that's the next step in my life. And it's like, it's not always like that. And I know I said I married my wife in six months. And again, like Chris said, it's not, that's not for everybody. Everybody's not ready for that, that step. But I do feel like the biggest problem in today, in today's world is, Men and women don't communicate what they want out of a relationship. That's like y'all have relationship. to get the, you need to get together with intention. Like at the beginning of your relationship, let each other know what y'all looking for. That way, on down the line, you won't be feeling like you done been wasted two years, two, three, four years with a person, and they ain't looking to marry you. You know what I'm saying? It just all goes back to that. You know, date with purpose, date with intention, man. Yeah. So I think. Um... Uh, going going off what you said, though, I think a lot of that is society, though. You know, because society has norms, has certain has certain norms, and you know, for women, so uh, society's norms is you know, at a certain I mean, at a certain age, you need to go and get married, because then the next the next question after you get married, hey, when you gonna have some kids? You know, because me and me and my wife, you know, it we've been together, we've been together since since junior high. And you know, I was 26, uh, 26 when I ended up when I ended up proposing, uh, ended up proposing to her. But like I said, our story is our story. You can't compare our story with somebody uh, with somebody else's story because, as we know, in you know, in biology, you know, men and women or boys and girls mature at different at different levels. You know, you don't want what you don't want to do is rush yourself into a bad situation. And then you have a bad experience, and then that sours you on the whole institution itself. So like I'm not getting married because blah blah blah. When you you rushed or you pre you allowed yourself to be pressured into mm -hmm. marrying some somebody because of society, because that's what I was supposed to. That's what I was supposed to do. This is what I you are so, who I supposed to marry. I was supposed to have these many kids. I was supposed to do this, blah blah. No, no, if it's not your time, if you haven't met the right person, you're not gonna make a you're not gonna fit a square peg into a round into a round hole. And I think the other the other thing that really stuck out to me on the show was the the age the age of the people these people that were making these ultimatums like 23 years old 24 just let you social media bro like 25 and 26 man. and you but, somebody an ultimatum to marry you at but that but that's just the thing I, I mean i will be honest i can say this like it took me 
almost to my damn near forties to like get married. And I mean, there's a variety of reasons for that, but I can tell you now, like that it's just a reality. Like men, and when men, uh, I, you know, this is a very generalized statement, but you know, like if there's any truth to it, men get validated by women when they're young. You gotta get a woman in order to get more women uh, to learn your game from a woman and all that. Like it, it's it's like one of those unspoken but kind of realistic things. And then there are women as we already are alluding to, women get validation for, uh, you know, like later on in life. And honestly, you know, through marriage, and honestly, when you really think about it, it's kind of like there is a timeline on that because you're at your prime, like in that 20 year old, uh, that 20 something uh, stage and people who are living life by super, superficial standards. Who wants to really marry somebody who's like long in the tooth, a spinster, a semen, or what have you like that? And it's a very negative thing to say about anybody. But like that's kind of like the mindset that some people have and, or you're dating people who are the your same age. And those people are probably already divorcees. And I guarantee you, a 40 something year old dude that already been married and got kids, he ain't necessarily trying to get married again. So it kind of, you are kind of like, if marriage is something that you want, you are kind of in a pressure cooker to want to get married early because, like, the older you get and the more set in your ways you become, the harder it is to deal with your ass, man or woman, just straight up. Too. But would you, but let me ask, I mean, I would, I would. My retort to that would be, would you rather mess around and get married just because, hey, I feel pressure to get married and end up somebody that you really, you, uh, 10 years later or five years later, you look, you wake up and be like, why in the world did I marry this person? And I hate, want and hate the fact that you, you married this person. I will say, and that's part of the reason why I think the statistic that 50% of all marriages end up in divorce, you know, like, I mean, I, I don't want that for anybody. I don't want anybody to rush into something they don't want to be in or like, uh, get in a marriage of convenience, but I will be the first person to say, I feel as if like there's, on one level, there are pressures to like rush through these things. And then there's also societal pressures, as we are talking about, that basically are because like society tells you like, hey, this is this is what normalcy looks like. This is what, you know, the, the American dream is or like, you know, or what the or what your God tells you to do or what have you. And I, I, I don't have a problem with any of those things, but you really do in this modern age maybe the concept of marriage should evolve a little bit because like technically maybe y'all should just date forever or like maybe y'all should just have a connection but not necessarily have it on paper maybe maybe you need to be alone maybe are you you know maybe i just need a co-parent i mean maybe y'all should have like a verse I, I i don't have all the answers nobody it seems like has all the answers but like i can tell you that that timeline it it it, it makes a difference you getting you know you when you maybe might be a little bit more idealistic about love and what a relationship is maybe you think the hollywood concept of what love is like you might be able to accept that a lot more in your 20s than trying to get married in your 30s 40s 50s you know after you've had an opportunity to either grow into yourself or become jaded just straight up that's how i look at it so don't want to force you but you got to like understand the consequences of waiting yeah well, i think you uh, understand the consequences of waiting i definitely think to answer your question you know would you rather well however you worded the question there are a lot of people who go who who don't want to do it but it's kind of that same thing they're like damn do i have a good thing am i being selfish for not wanting to get married and then they just go ahead and do it and then they wake up 50 years or 10 20 years later like damn i made a mistake i shouldn't have did it i can't stand this person i mean i've seen it firsthand you know someone married and they end up getting a divorce years later and they were like, you know what I'm saying? I feel so much better. I don't miss this person. You know, my blood pressure was through the roof. I used to be afraid to come home because I didn't know what they were going to say. I didn't know how they were going to act. Now that I've gotten a divorce, I am 10 times freer. So I don't have to, I don't have that stress. And people don't understand the weight that a marriage has because you have to provide and you have to, you know, you have to be there every day. It's not something that you could just say, you know what, I'm tired, fuck this shit, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't do that when you're doing a marriage. It's not that simple. Because, I mean, the song is cheaper to keep. It definitely comes into play because it ain't cheap to get no damn divorce, especially if you have kids. 
you nine times out of ten, you going on child support and some more stuff. So these are things that, like Reed said, we need to step back and have this conversation and actually communicate. That's another thing that died, that goes into that 50% of marriage is not lasting. It's because there's not enough communication. That's one thing that I told my wife now. One thing we're gonna do, we're gonna communicate, big dog. I'm not, I'm not with that. My first marriage, I was definitely rushed into that. I shouldn't have got married when I was when I was 24. I wasn't ready. I stepped up to the plate and I did what I was supposed to do because that's how my dad raised me. But when I look back at that age, looking at looking at it now, when I look back at that age, when I got married, if I could go back in time, I would tell myself, don't do that stupid shit. Boy, wait. You know what I'm saying? Wait a couple of years. Learn yourself more. Where I'm at now. And the marriage so I am, of course, again, I'm not perfect. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I'm wiser. I know more. I know how to communicate. At that time, when I was 22, 23 years old, bro, I was still stubborn, still stuck in my ways. I still felt like I was single. I wasn't out here doing single things, but I still felt like I was single. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happens to a lot of young people. When you said the age of the folks on the show was 23, giving people ultimatums, I mean, come on, bro. That lets you know that social media is the nation. People are seeing, these folks are seeing what other relationships look like and they want that same exact thing, but they're really not ready for it. They don't know the things that actually come with the marriage. Because after you say, I do, what are you going to do to keep that marriage going? A lot of people ain't willing to make that sacrifice. So know yourself. Before and women, you stop yes. opposing the men. Stop opposing Ooh. the men. I see William uh, do that shit. Don't do that goofy don't, shit. Don't, 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 record it. don't record it if you're going to do it. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, say don't this, do it. Uh, and I think I, I think everybody will agree as we transition to the next as we transition to the next topic. I don't think an ultimatum is the best way to go about finding love or to be uh, to be married. So do Man, your due diligence. Like one thing you do was your, gonna say, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. Keep going. Do your due do, do your due okay, okay, Will. But do your uh due diligence before you decide to go down that road because it is very, it is very serious and marriage is not a joke. So we're talking about very serious. Hey, these playoffs is about to be very, very serious. Fellas, from the things that you've seen. So far, the few games that have been played, I'm going to ask you who's coming out of the East, who's coming out of the West, and who do you think is going to win the NBA championship? I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm probably not obligated to answer this because I definitely said the Lakers were going to make the playoffs at the beginning. Hey, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> Man. Nobody, no, nobody knew the bottom was gonna fall out. But hey, come on, everybody else getting their take. You, you, you qualified to give your take. You I mean, to? honestly, after one game, it's kind of hard to say uh, who's going to win. I mean, I think there are a few teams that, or a handful of teams that I think could win. You know, in the East, I think the Seventy Sixers. I think the Bucks, of course, because they've been there. They won. They won last year. I think in the West, you know, I'm leaning towards Golden State and maybe Phoenix. Uh, I mean, especially with, you know, Steph ain't even playing well and Jordan Poole is just going Ooh. crazy. Ooh. And once once Steph figures it out, you know, that team is going to be dangerous, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so I, I think those are the clear cut. I mean, I, I love my Grizzlies. I hope that they, you know, I, I was really shocked that they, they got beat like they did in the first game. Hold up. But uh, – I mean, it's just one game, you know. It is what it is. I think that they're, they're young; they got to figure it out. But I, I think in the end, they're, they're tough, and they're gonna they they gonna come back next game and and do what they got to do. So we'll see. Yeah, but those are my all picks, that town, You know what I'm saying? Come through the hole and dunk on y'all like that. Man. Yeah, it's one game. You. I mean, it's one game. I figured that was gonna. Come, I figured that was gonna come in hype, especially after that last game. Then they were talking mm -hmm. all that that, that crap. You know, and then Josh said what he said, so they really, really had a chip on their shoulder. But I mean, it's a people got to realize it's a full series. I've seen people talking about Josh, talking about he all talk, he overrated, blah blah blah. The boy still nigga, dropped thirty two points. Nigga, nigga, consistently dropping, dropping damn thirty a game. Like, but y'all say he overrated. Fuck what y'all talking about. Who y'all, who y'all rooting for? That's what I want to know. Big dog from the. You know what I'm saying? Since since Josh so overrated, 
dunking on everybody here. You know what I'm saying? When he come dunk on your favorite player, then we're gonna see what you got to say. The boy ain't flipping so twist, bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to like that. From, from reason about Sammy, 12 to like reason that. Morant. <laughs> talk about 12 like that. Oh, that boy got 12 back. Well, I'm gonna give him I'm gonna give him a much nicer Jake. All right. Because um, <laughs> I, I don't I mean, you know, I don't have a favorite team. Uh I definitely don't feel I definitely don't feel like um the 76ers are coming out. Uh I just can't trust hard and big dog. I can't. Sorry, man. I don't want MB to get shit. I mean, I like I like I don't like, like, like MB either, man. I, like like that I feel like he's so dominant, man. It's gonna be it's it's they tough, bro. They tough, yeah, but I just I don't know, bro. I don't feel like you can. I don't. I just don't see. I don't see anybody in the East beating Milwaukee. I feel like of all of the teams that were put together this off season, Milwaukee is the only, really the only team that brought back all of their players outside of PJ Tucker. They pretty much brought back all of their players, and they still were a top seed. And you know, it's kind of like it reminds me of that. My they were kind of remind me of that Miami team. You know, it's like we don't have to be the number one seed. We don't have to be the number two seed. We just need to do what we need to do. Win our important games throughout the season. Win the games we're supposed to win throughout the season. Be consistent. Seed, be consistent. That way, and make sure we stay as healthy as possible. That way, once we get to the playoffs, we can make a deep run. That's exactly what they look like. Now, I feel like either a Boston. Now we were talking, we were having this conversation earlier. I feel like either Boston or. Um, the Miami Heat, they're going to give them a run for their money, for sure. They're going to give them a run for their money uh, because they play good defense. They play good team defense. And both of those teams, but I, I, Miami more so than than Boston, but they're both semi-deep. Definitely Miami. Miami is a very deep team, right? But I just feel like the experience in a seven-game series, the way that Giannis has a shot now, he has a consistent shot. Like, you literally have to pick. You can say you have to pick him up full court, I don't see I don't see nobody beating them. And in the West Breasts are toss up between Golden State. As much as as much as I hated the Golden State Warriors when they got KD dog, I like them now that he gone and, uh, and step out there balling. You ain't got no room on the bandwagon, cuz balling um your boy Clay back. If I just hate, you know, I hate James Wiseman can't stay healthy and get his footing together. Cause I feel like if they had Wiseman out there with Draymond and all of them. That team would be unstoppable, and I want to see a collision course with them in Phoenix because Phoenix, you know, it's so crazy to look at how efficient Phoenix is, but nobody talks about them. Nobody says much about them. They're, that that's one. Re- and plus, I like you know what I'm saying. I like the mama mentality that Devin Booker has. You can tell that he's definitely taken over as the leader of that team. The way he comes out and his game is just so smooth. So, um, I mean, to be honest with you, bro, I don't see anybody beating Milwaukee, but I would not be surprised if Golden State or um, the Phoenix Suns took that series, took took home the gold throughout uh, at the end of this year. Not- Don't the Suns have the best uh, the best? Uh, That's the best record. Yeah, the best record. Yeah, yeah. and it's gonna be tough. I think uh, for me coming out the East, and I just I just can't get past you having the two best players. I mean, if you got the two best players, I think you got a shot in it every night you get on the court. So. I still say I still say Brooklyn because to me, um, if if Kevin Durant's foot wasn't as big as it was, you know they would have been playing they would have been playing in the NBA Finals, uh, you know last last year because I could I think they would have wiped the floor uh, with Atlanta, um, but my my thing in the uh, so I think I think Brooklyn is coming. I think Brooklyn is coming out of the is coming out of the East because, like you said, I I don't trust Harden and uh I don't trust Harden and Embiid, and a center led team I don't think is going to I don't think is ever going to um is going to win without some help on the on the perimeter and Harden disappears too much in big uh in big games. Milwaukee, I mean I know Giannis is coming is, is coming on, but if you got if you got Super Saiyan Kyrie and, and and KD on, I think they can both of them together can cancel out can cancel out uh, Giannis because I don't, you know I, I I look at um I look at Middleton and I still like eh, Middleton. Eh. What you Middleton is good. Middleton, Middleton is a solid. Drew Holiday, like, Drew Holiday too, and that's that's what I'm saying, Brad. 
you got to look at it, bro. Yeah. And I, 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 I understand you the respect you have to have for Kyrie and KD. Those, those are by far the two most offensively gifted players this league has ever seen. I mean, pulling up from 30, not to sound like Stephen A., coming down. I don't know, even like Kyrie. Hand, I mean, I still you have know. to handle everything. But the team don't play defense, and they barely beat Cleveland. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They allow Cleveland and to Kyrie. Katie has been Katie just been inconsistent, man. I'm telling He's you, I've been, been watching. Him. I've been. He, I've been watching him for about about almost two weeks now, and he's been he's been super inconsistent, bro. Like he he'll drop thirty one games, he'll drop twenty one the next, like you know. Uh, so I just feel like it's all going to depend on him because Ky, to me personally, Kyrie's going to get his. Like he's going to score the ball. He's been doing it at a at a high clip for the past few weeks. He's been he's been scoring about thirty points a game almost, and it's just been KD. KD hasn't been he hasn't shown up. And it, then after that, you gotta you gotta wonder if KD doesn't show up, who's gonna be that next player? Because they really don't have anybody. Seth Curry, they could have left him in set in, in Philadelphia because he's been a scrub ever since he came to the Nets. You know, uh, Patty Mills is inconsistent. Hell, uh, and then the rest of everybody else is just. I mean, Bruce Brown is pretty is a pretty good role player, but outside of them, it's just like I, I don't know. I don't I don't see. I could I could see the 76ers over them because. At least they got players like Tyrese Maxey. Maxey, hell, he just scored 36 the other night. Like, the dude can ball. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even if Harden ain't balling, they have other players that can play. You know, uh, I don't, I just don't trust that roster that the Nets have. I think um, for me, and for me coming out of, coming out of the West, you know, my, my, my favorite team overall is Miami Heat. But like I said, I, I still don't, I still don't trust them because of Jimmy Butler. But uh, coming out of coming out of the West, I'm going with Golden State because they're my second favorite. They're actually, my second favorite team, and I'm I'm just rooting for Steph Curry, you know, uh, and Clay Thompson. You know, for, after after Clay being missing these past couple years, you know, it, to me, it's just I, I sentimentally root, you know, root for the guy because you know you you went through adversity like that, and I and I still feel like if. If he wouldn't, have, if he wouldn't have got hurt, I still think they could have beat they could have beat Toronto, uh, even even with KD even with KD hurt. But I'm still I'm, I'm rooting for I'm rooting for Golden State and with Jordan Jordan Poole stepping up as as well as he's stepping up, you know, doing some of the heavy lifting, you know, you can take you you know Steph Curry can ease back, you know, he can ease back into that into that role later on, you know, later on in the later on in the playoffs so i'm going I'm, I'm i'm rooting for i'm rooting for golden state overall but let's transition to the best thing i've seen all week we're coming to we're coming to the end of the show fellas what you got the best thing that you have seen all week so the best thing that i've seen all week was actually the morbius movie it's kind of funny too because like I know it's getting a lot of bad press, but I mean I don't know. I kind of walked into it really not wanting to see the movie because I have an issue with movies that are outside the main MCU. But and Sony held movies like you know with the exception of Spider Man uh, franchise, but it was good. You know I mean for what it was, it was good. I guess maybe because it isn't as dialed in or tied in to like movie franchises when it comes to comic book movies like maybe that's the reason why people have issues with it and it's not the tightest story and i know between covid and reshoots like that had did his thing on it but for what it is it's an enjoyable movie um i like the the graphics i mean it's a plastic story but it was it was good i do hate that it was a pg-13 so that means they couldn't really show blood and gore uh like they really wanted to it came out like that but it was an enjoyable movie. Like uh, I, I, I got to give it his, his props for what it was. Yeah, uh, I thought just a piggyback off of that. I thought Morbius was really good as well. Uh, again, I didn't go into it with any expectations. Uh, I just wanted to see wanted to see Morbius. I remember from my childhood watching Spider Man, and you know, so I, I really wanted to just go check it out and see what it's about. And now I kind of can't wait to see how they tie him in to the mcu and you know into spider-man and blade is supposed to be 
coming out, you know, allegedly here soon. So we'll see. But how there's no guarantee he's going to be in it because yeah. of he's Sony yeah, and the MCU. But and, I think I, I think I was reading something where they've got it worked out to where they can include him into into that movie. So mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I I remember reading some about it. But anyway, mm-hmm. uh, the the best thing I've seen this week is or you know in 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 the weeks before is Winning Time. Uh, the series on HBO Max about uh, the Showtime Lakers. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of the Lakers, uh, but it is a, a great, great show. And it's very, you know, I don't know how true it is to to what actually happened, but it is very interesting, you know, to see Magic Johnson, like a young Magic Johnson, and see how he came into the league and how his relationship was with uh, – Kareem, you know, which is very funny because Kareem is kind of this like stoic character who's like, I don't, you know, I don't fuck with you young kids, <laughs> you know, basically. And, you know, he's in his in his Muslim uh, or Islamic faith and, you know, all that type of stuff. So uh, kind of like Kyrie, huh? <laughs> no, no, he ain't, no, he ain't nothing like Kyrie. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it's really, and then uh, you know, seeing seeing the owner, uh, was Jerry Bus, Jerry Bus, yeah, uh, seeing seeing him, his story and how he actually got the team, and and just everything that he had to go through is really interesting too. So, and I mean, they're still dropping episodes, so it's still going. On. I would rec- recommend if you're a Lakers fan or if you're just a sports fan in general. Man, it's a great series to watch, and uh, I love the cinematics of it. I love how they shoot the – it's like an old – kind of a, a old-style uh, cinematic vibe. It kind of reminds me of uh, the other old shows. Old-school porn. Like, yeah. No. <laughs> hey, you said it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> But uh, hey, they got they got they got some of that up in the uh, magic getting <laughs> magic getting busy up in there. Up in there. It might be how he got it, but that's uh, what you know there. All right. Hey. Uh, <clears throat> mm. Young Chris, what you got? Uh, the best thing I seen all week. I'm trying to see shit. What did I see this week? I really ain't did shit for work because <laughs> um. I guess I have to say the best thing that I've seen, um, wouldn't say this week, uh, seeing your boy Tiger get back out there, man, and compete. Um, you know, he had a very, very, very bad wreck, and it was questionable was he going to um, get out and actually be able to compete? Because I know at one point he wasn't even able to walk the course. I mean, he actually went out there, even though, you know, he didn't win. I didn't even think he was close. Um, he, he definitely um, proved that. He still has that competitive nature and nothing will stop him. You know what I'm saying? So I can say that's one of the, that's really probably one of the best things that I've seen. Um, one of the best things that I can say I've seen all week because I have not seen more of these yet. I saw Batman uh, a couple, I think like a month ago. The movie was long as hell, by the way. DC, um, I'm not making these movies. Good. movies. I think it was good, though. It was, it was good, definitely though. good. Yeah. But damn. Well, think, uh, for me, the best thing the best thing I saw this week was actually an interview. Um, it was an interview that uh, Charlemagne did with Pusha T. And it was very interesting and enlightening because it saw it, it showed a different side of Pusha T. In fact, uh, it showed an emotional side because actually during the interview, he actually started crying, which was uh, which was actually really, really shocking uh, to me. Because, you know, when you hear when you hear Pusha all rap, you know, he's always talking, you know, talking about the drug, uh, the drug game. Um, but when Charlemagne, you know, was asking him because Pusha, he lost his mom and lost his dad in like, uh, in close, uh, in close, uh, time, uh, close timeline. And you could tell that his parents were really, uh, really, really close, really, really clo- uh, close with him. So that was really one of the best things. And I think, uh, Charlemagne did, did a really good job. Uh, uh, of interviewing and showing the human, uh, the human and emotional part uh, or side of uh, Pusha T, because like I said, these entertainers, a lot of times people forget that they're actually human and that they have, you know, they go through some of the same stuff, same stuff that we, um, that we go through and, you know, showing, and seeing him go, have to get the tissue and stop and actually crying. It was, it was different. 
it was definitely uh definitely different so i would advise anybody to go you know go check that uh go check the interview out because it was actually a really good uh really good interview but we have come to the end of episode 30 three oh 30 for 30 thank you guys we thank everybody that has been supporting us whether you watched at the first episode or this episode 30 is your first time viewing once again like subscribe share the content click the bell for notifications authentic men have an authentic conversation and as we always say you didn't feel us this time you definitely gonna feel us the next time Hey, it's your boy Rob from the They Gonna Feel Me podcast. And if you want more authentic conversation from authentic men, check out this video.